Los Angeles is pretty big on monuments. We have over 1,100 of them scattered across the city. Only 3% of those are devoted to women, meaning of those 1,100 buildings, only 3% were lived in or designed by women. I think that does a disservice to the history of women's legacies and I think there is an impact there on the way women are remembered because having a readily accessible physical space there means that generations onward will be able to get to know these women and see the impact that they left on the city and I think that women are major contributors to the rich history here and they should have physical spaces to remember them by. My name is Nia Johannes and I'm a freelance writer in Los Angeles. We're currently standing in front of the Women's Building. This was an experimental space where women, feminists, artists could come and discuss everything from like feminist theory to gender dynamics, race, class, ethnicity. It was essentially a place where marginalized groups could come and thrive. The Feminist Studio Workshop was originally located on Grandview. They were first to move operations in 1975. It moved to where we're standing right now on North Spring Street and it received landmark status in 2018. So the Women's Building is an official HCM and that allows it to live on in perpetuity as a sort of brick and mortar reminder of the trailblazing feminists and women artists who protested the sort of patriarchal nature of arts education in the 70s and 80s. The Women's Building is just adding to a legacy of women's history here. LA is known for its thriving subcultures. This is a part of it, this is a part of that history, and now we've got new subcultures arising from it, like the Feminist Center for Creative Work, just sort of following in its footsteps, and to have this physical commemoration here and know that it's protected just allows future generations to build from it. Behind me is Pan's Restaurant. It was designed by Chinese-American architect Helen Lu Fong. She was a meaningful member of the Googie art movement in Los Angeles. She describes her buildings as having a sort of Jetsons aesthetic, and you can see that right here with Pan's Restaurant. You might even recognize it from HBO's Insecure as one of the prominent settings on that show. Another one of our buildings that is pretty iconic in the city is Johnny's Coffee Shop located on Wilshire and Fairfax. Johnny's Coffee Shop is featured in the Coen Brothers cult classic, The Big Lebowski. Something interesting here is that both Pan's Restaurant and Johnny's Coffee Shop have been given the Hollywood treatment and as a result, Helen's legacy is overshadowed by the legacy of Hollywood. It's important to note this building here, Pan's Restaurant, is not a, a historic cultural monument. While it is protected from demolition, not having HCM status means Helen Huang's legacy is not as protected and it doesn't get that household name that some of the male architects get. Male architects like Frank Lloyd Wright and Richard Neutra have benefited from auteurism. Their buildings are scattered across Los Angeles and they each have a handful of historic cultural monuments that are preserved within the landscape of this city. And I think they've benefited from that sort of permanence of passing their buildings and their household names to this day and will continue to be for future generations because they're just so cemented in the landscape. So the archive is absolutely essential, but there's something about the archive that makes it a little inaccessible. It's something that you have to seek out. It's something you look into or, you know, when you're doing research, it's something that you have to look into yourself. Whereas a physical monument is something that you might just happen upon. And I think the grandeur of having a physical space allows the everyday person to encounter it and it becomes a part of the texture of that space and I think when you're walking around your city, walking your dog or like headed to work, you'll pass these buildings and something about pairing the archive with a physical space 
allows you to sort of further cement a person into the city's history. I'd like to see more HCMs devoted to women, people of color, members of the LGBTQ community, but specifically people that we don't really know about. And I'm sure there are individuals out there. It just becomes increasingly clear to me that there are other notable figures, trailblazers who've shaken up the landscape and really contributed to the history of Los Angeles and deserve to be known on a first and last name basis. Carita Kent, also known as Sister Mary Carita, was an artist, educator, and social justice advocate. She was born in Fort Dodge, Iowa, and when she was quite young, her family moved to Hollywood, so she was very much a daughter of Hollywood, and she grew up right here in Los Angeles. She joined the order shortly after she graduated high school. The order's name is Immaculate Heart of Mary, and they have been in Hollywood for well over 100 years themselves, and they ran the Immaculate Heart College. So a long legacy of women and education. My name is Nellie Scott, and I am the director of the Carita Art Center. I am so fortunate to be the champion of uh, Carita Kent's legacy at the Carita Art Center. We are actually on the same property that the Immaculate Heart College was located, which is now currently the Immaculate Heart High School and Middle School. The Carita Art Center is just here, and then Carita Studio is just across the street on Franklin Avenue. So it was an annex of the Immaculate Heart College Art Department as a printmaking studio. The thing that I think is so wonderful and magic about Carita's work is that a viewer doesn't really need an invitation to be invited in. So whether you're coming at her work from a spiritual point of view or just an aesthetic appreciation, I think that there's this wonderful melding of thought and questions that it draws upon the viewer of what does it mean as an individual and your responsibility for the collective whole, like your actions have much larger impact. And I think that that really does center in the conversations that were happening in the 60s and the larger political movements and cultural movements that were happening at that time. We learned of the pending demolition of Carita's former studio, which is 5518 Franklin, which, you know, just floored us in so many ways because we knew what had happened in this space and we knew how important this was to the larger cultural movements, not only for Los Angeles, but nationally. And we felt it really was important to raise our hand and raise the flag of this is a value. And I think that this would be something that could be a place that would honor, honor her legacy in the process. I think often we see the artwork finished on the walls, but the artistic process is such an important part to any artist uh, in their work. And we went through the very interesting process of getting HCM status, and we're so grateful because none of that would have been possible without so many voices and so many community members that understood how important this was. We learned that it was only 3% of historic cultural monuments in Los Angeles that are associated with women's heritage. And that, that in and of itself was, that was a, that's a hard number to hear. And then to you know really think through what that means on a national level around those percentage. Even smaller when you look at uh, women artists and creatives and their workplaces. So we do feel very fortunate that Others saw how important this was, not just for Los Angeles, but for a much larger world out there that I think that can appreciate this space. I think that there's so many, I don't want to call them hurdles, but I think that there, you have to think through some of the, the process itself. We are so fortunate and privileged to have a staff and to have an archive and to think through in these resources to put together a nomination. And I think that that is you know, a larger question that the larger community of preservation is looking at and opening up the conversation of whose history is being recognized and preserved. There have been many heartening moments, frankly, you know, again, so lucky and so fortunate, but 
hard not to have some ugly tears, you know, in the process. And one of those moments was really the um, Cultural Heritage Commission on December 17th. The amount of callers that gave their one minute testimony of why this space was important. And when they spoke about the space, it wasn't just the four walls that they were speaking about. They were speaking about it from almost a very spiritual place of the things that occurred there, the artwork that was made there, the larger conversations that have come out of this place. And I think they also very much saw what it could be again and what that represents for Los Angeles in particular. We're gonna need spaces like this after the pandemic. We're going to need spaces that invite others in and create conversation and dialogue around hope and love and justice and all of the things that Carita herself did during her lifetime. I think whatever happens with the future of this building, I, I think that it will be a collective whole that decides what it could be for the community that it sits in and think of spaces not only as a cultural asset but a community asset, a place of creation. You know, it's a very ordinary building, it's a very humble building. And I think the reminder is that extraordinary things can happen in very ordinary spaces.